What kind of sonar do you need? What are the different types that are out there? What do they all do? Tools for the Toolbox, that's next on Sonar Tech Skills. Welcome to Sonar Tech Skills. Join your host, Greg Lipinski, as he travels the world training police, fire, and military professionals in side scan sonar. With nearly two decades of experience in the location, documentation, and recovery of underwater criminal evidence, he is now sharing that knowledge with you. Learn right alongside first responders so you too can master the world of sonar. Now we're going to talk about the different tools in your toolbox. Okay, different tools in the toolbox. What are the different types of sonar that are out there? Because there are plenty of sonars. If you go onto Amazon or if you just Google sonar, you're going to see all kinds of sonars ranging from $1,500 all the way up to $150,000. And you're like, okay, well, well, which do I need? What am I getting? What are their missions? And, and a lot of you don't, understand, uh, don't know what the difference are. So you call your purchasing agent because you know you need a sonar. So you say, I need a sonar. And so, they, so your purchasing agent, he Googles it and he just says, this one's cheap. There you go. So you need to be able to determine what type of sonar you need before you call your purchasing agent to buy one. So we're going to go over the different types. First is towed side scan. That's, this is a, a tow fish. Okay, it is a towed side scan. It's a side scan, transducer on the side, it uses a cable, you drag it from your boat and you're able to raise and lower it to the seafloor. Okay, then we have hull mounted. That's gonna be your Lowrance, your Humminbird, Simrad, Raymarine, a lot of different companies have hull mounted sonars. And that's going to be like it says in the name, it's mounted to the hull of your boat, that transducer's mounted to the hull of your boat. For the beginning of the lecture, we're going to combine these two into one. We're just going to call that side scan, okay? Toad systems, hull mounted systems, all one type of sonar, okay? They're used for the same thing. They're used to search, okay? Now, different companies produce different types of side scan for different missions. Hummingbird, of course, uses it for what? Fish finding, right? That's the majority of the hull mounted systems are, that are out there are used for fish finding. Fish finders are great to help you do body recovery. However, you have to understand that it wasn't designed for the purpose that you are using it for. So you need to work around those limitations of it and be able to use it how you need it versus what it was designed for. And we'll talk about some of those later on. The next type is called down looking. Down looking, that's your depth finder on your boat. So the depth finder is sending that ping straight to the seafloor and it's bouncing up and they're using speed of sound to tell you how deep the water is, okay? And some of those uh, down-looking sonars now will give you a little picture, kind of looks like a rainbow on the bottom, topographical map kind of thing, right? And there's a new type of down-looking sonar that a lot of the hull mounted companies are using. So if you've seen, I think it's um, the Helix Mega or something like that made by, what is it? They, they, not the 360, 360 is a different type. We'll talk about that in a minute. But it's a single sonar or a single transducer that's pointing straight down, and it's going to give you kind of a, a fake version of side scan. Um, and it will give you, some call it structure scan, where you can see the topography on the bottom. Those are really cool, but that all falls into down-looking sonar. The next thing we have is what's called sector scan, and that's where your 360 comes from, sector scan. Now, sector scan isn't a towed system. It's not a search sonar like we would think of is where you're towing a device behind the boat or one's mounted to your boat and you're moving through the water. What sector scan is, normally it's either on a tripod or it's on a pole and they'll drop it in one location and it doesn't move, right? You take it off the boat, you drop it in and it sits there and it gives you a 360 degree view of the water around it, okay? And so that's called sector scan. We're gonna see some imaging from these here in a minute. After that, we have what's called multi-beam sonar. So multi-beam, now there's two different types of multi-beam sonar. There's the really expensive kind that makes those 3D images out in the, you know, like of submarines and I think there's one of the um, Blackbeard ship, uh, that kind of stuff. But those are too expensive for us. Those are, again, multi-hundred thousand dollar systems. Um, so let's talk about the multi-beam systems that we can afford. 
That's going to be your uh, TriTech uh, BlueView or your Gemini or any type of sonar that's attached to your ROV or the Ditson handheld, right? Heard uh, Chris talking about uh, the Ditson handheld earlier. So the diver handheld sonar that he points like a flashlight when he's underwater, um, that is a multi-beam sonar. Multi-beams, whether it's ROV or diver held, uh, work kind of like a flashlight. Wherever you point them is where you're going to get the imaging, okay? They have their own specific mission too. So we're going to kind of go through the different views of these and what, what do they actually look like, and we'll talk about their missions um, as we look at those. I'm going to start the video here in a second, but this is a common view of side scan. And it works as what we call a waterfall, where the imaging starts at the top and it flows down. And you end up with this funny thing in the middle called a nadir, where you got a gold line and two black areas. That's a big misconception of what that is, and we're going to talk about that later too. But what side scan is, is as the boat is moving through the water, you are searching out to both sides, both port and to starboard. Okay, you have ranges on both sides. The port range, starboard range. Combined, that's called swath. Okay, combined, that's called swath. Two different terms. Range is from the transducer off to one side. Swath is both of those transducers combined. Make sense? Okay. So as you're looking at side scan, you need to imagine what tools you need within that software set for your particular mission. Okay. Each mission has something different. Okay. One, we need to be able to document where these objects are. Some systems out there that you'll see have no record. They don't record. You can't mark an event. You can get GPS, but you're going to have to pull out your cell phone to take a picture of the screen because that's the last time you're going to see it. And then there's some advanced tools like measuring length, measuring area, measuring height of an object, being able to see your vessel on the chart, being able to mark these are individual events right? Where we've seen something, we like it, so we double click on it, forms this little blinky box around it, and it saves it as an event. So, and we can see those, and we can click on these, and it'll give us a little thumbnail image of what we were able to see or what we were able to find. There's a little blinky box. So, this is an airplane wing, okay? And so, you can see that here is a range and bearing marker, and that's something that's going to help us get back to the object we marked. Because how many people have marked an object and then couldn't find it again? How often does that happen, right? You're scanning along, that looks like the body, click, and then you go to scan it again, oh, the body must have moved. Body must have moved on me. Bodies don't move. They're either floating or they're sinking. We'll talk about that when we get in kind of a forensic side of this. But, that is what side scan is going to tell you. It is used to search large areas, large area search. It is going to be the backbone of your search. You're going to put this in the water and you're going to go search a, a targeted search box area that either you or somebody else created for you to search. Okay. And it's going to help you determine whether or not the anomaly you're looking for is, is in that area. Now, once you find your object, right? We found our object, we believe it to be the body, and so now we need to monitor that object, right? Because side scan has to be in motion to work. I have a whole portion of the class in the, in the actual class for that, but we're gonna skip over that. Um, so side scan has to be in motion to work, and so once you've located your object and you stop moving because you're gonna send divers down, now you don't have any imaging. So that's when you're gonna take your sector scan or your 360 and you are going to drop it down so you can monitor an area. That's what this is. Transducers in the center. We still have our nadir and it's projecting out is our range and it's going to circle that range. Now, as we watch this, when I click this for this to go, you're gonna see a diver here. He's gonna walk up to our tripod, he's gonna adjust the tripod, and then he's gonna walk over here to a structure. We're gonna have a big structure on this side. And he's gonna walk over and he's gonna find something on that structure that, that he's looking for. 
okay? And so we're able to monitor the diver when we put him in the water and we're able to monitor where we believe the body to be and we can literally talk our diver to the body. A little bit to your left, a little bit to your left, five feet forward, bend down. Okay, I say bend down because the guy's walking in this. He's actually wearing a full suit. He's not, um, I'll just play it and you can watch it. All right, so here's our diver. He's walking. He's adjusting the uh, sonar. And he's going to walk up to this structure here. We'll watch him here for a second. So it gives us, again, that 360 degree view of our search area. We use the side scan to search and find. Once we found something, we drop in the sector scan, sector scan monitors, and again, we're able to direct our diver to an object and move him around obstacles in, in unsafe areas. So here he is, he's walking up. So is it just picking up like gear on him, not actually his body? No, it's picking up him. That's okay. him. Yep. Some of the stuff won't pick up fish, for instance, on the side scan, but it, know, it, know, it will. All of it, any any when we get into the frequency portion of it, we will kind of get into that. Why why are you seeing it on some and not seeing it on a that's all a frequency thing. All right, so this next one is multi-beam. So multi-beam, again, is the one that is mounted on your ROV or it is the one that is in the diver's hand. So this is what the diver is going to have on him to help him see. So again, we use side scan to search. We locate, drop the sector scan so the boat operator or the captain of the crew can see and monitor the diver. Now the diver goes in and he can be directed from surface or and, or and and, use the diver handheld to be able to see for himself. So that is the, what, third mission. And now I'm gonna play this. Now this is the same structure we were looking at in the other video. And this is mounted on an ROV, and this is actually trailing just in front of the diver. I wish they had done it the reverse where we could see the diver, but it's not, it's in front of the diver and we are going to follow that same structure that the diver was just looking at. So it gives you a different type of view and it is used differently. So those are the main three. I know we talked about four with down looking, uh, but down looking we'll, we'll talk about it at a different time. Uh, but those three are the main ones that you wanna look at and that you need to figure out what do you need first, right? What do you want to add on later? And then how much do you actually have for these projects? Because you got a budgetary concept here, right? We can't afford everything and we already know that or all of you would have my system, right? But um, so plan and budget for what type of system you need first and then how you're going to build onto that. And when you're planning for that first system, which is typically side scan, the, the first search tool, you need to figure out what tools you need on that side scan to conduct the mission that your agency is doing, right? Hope you learned a little bit about the types of sonars that are available to you. And join us next time as we learn about the four rules to great imaging.